Hello girls, my name is Marie Garo, and I would like to talk to you today about hiding God's Word in your heart. First I want to look at a little bit of what the Bible has to say about it, and then I want to look at some practical ways that we can do it. Most of you, I'm sure, have heard the verse about hiding God's Word in our hearts. Most of you have probably even memorized it. It's found in Psalm 119, verse 11. So if you have your Bibles ready, Please open it to Psalm 119, verse 11. I'm going to read it. The ESV says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The King James says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The ASV says, Thy word have I laid up in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The NSB says, Your word have I treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. And the NIV says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Different translations say it a little bit differently. And I love looking at different translations because they are really helpful in study. They give you a fuller meaning to your text or to your word. I would encourage you to use different translations. In this passage, it shows us that we are to store up, lay up, hide, treasure God's word in our heart. When a squirrel stores its nuts for the winter, he spends a lot of time gathering them and then putting them away in a safe place for an inevitable time of need. When a child hides something, she finds a safe place to put that something where no one can see it or take it away from her. When a pirate treasures something, he does what he must to get it, and then he keeps it safe and guards it, regarding it as precious in his heart. Now look at Psalm 119 again. What is it that we are to store, lay up, hide, treasure? It's God's Word. We need to be like that squirrel, spending time gathering and storing the Word of God into our heart for an inevitable time of need. We need to be like that child, hiding God's Word safely in our hearts where no one can take it from us. We need to be like that pirate, doing what we must to obtain God's word, then guarding it in our hearts, regarding it as precious. Look at the second half of our passage. Every translation says this part the same. Why do we store, lay up, hide, treasure God's word in our heart? It's so that we will not sin against God. The truth is that we all sin. We all sin against God against ourselves, against others, against creation. And our sinning doesn't just go away once we're saved. But the beautiful and hope-filled reality for the believer is that we are free from the bondage of sin, which means that we can say no to sin. And we have the Holy Spirit to guide us into becoming more and more like Jesus. And the primary way that he does that is through the Word of God. We need to be filling ourselves washing ourselves, renewing ourselves with the Word of God. Matthew 12, 34 says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you fill your hearts with, girls, is what's going to come out of you. So, what are you filling your heart with? Is it Netflix, YouTube, gaming, novels? I would plead with you, don't kid yourselves. What you put in will come out. Be cautious about what you're putting into yourselves while proactively putting God's Word into your heart. Some of you may regularly memorize the Word of God, and I want to encourage you and commend you. Keep at it. Others of you may have memorized verses through Vacation Bible School or Awana or Sunday School, but stopped and it kind of piddled away once you stopped going. Or perhaps you've never even memorized a passage from the Bible. And I want you to not wallow in guilt or give up, but pick up your Bibles and let's begin. So, how do we do it? How do we hide God's Word in our heart? Different people have different methods on how to memorize. But for all people, it involves faithful work. And we kind of balk at that word work because it would be a lot easier if we could just put our earbuds in and put it on repeat, listen to it like 20 times while we're multitasking on something far more entertaining. But in truth, we have to work. It's just not going to work any other way. I'm going to walk you through the way I go about it and give you five steps. 
The first one is, choose a passage. You can choose a common passage, such as John 3.16, and I would add verse 17 to that as well. Or you can choose a passage from where you're currently reading in the Bible. You could also choose a passage that speaks specifically to um, a situation or a sin in your life. Those are all really good ways. Don't get bogged down in trying to find like the perfect verse. Every word of God is profitable. Something I've found helpful, um, and don't be scared of it, is actually to take larger chunks. Big chunks, whole chapters, or even more to memorize. And this is the reason why. Except for perhaps in the Proverbs, the writers of the Bible weren't just coming up with verse-by-verse verse tweetable quotes, but they had something substantial to communicate. So that's step one. Choose one. Choose a passage. The next step is two. Understand your passage. I wouldn't belabor this. You will understand your passage more and more as you memorize it, but do read it through and ask yourself, what does this mean? A great check to see if you understand it is to try and rephrase your passage in your own words. If you're able to do that, you can understand it a lot better. You may need to look up a word. You may need to find an older Christian whom you respect and ask them to explain something to you. Three, memorize your passage. Step one to memorizing, I would say, is actually pray. Pray, ask God to bless your memorization and commit it to Him. Then dive in. Read the first phrase, repeat it. Read it, repeat it, read it, repeat it. It helps me if I'm like pacing, walking back and forth. Read it, repeat it, move on to the next phrase. Read it, repeat it, add it to your first and keep going. Look for key words, look for connecting words. Think about how one thought leads logically to the next. If you come to a list, like the list of the fruits of the spirit, count how many are in your list so that you don't miss one and then think about how each one connects to the next one and that'll help you with your list and then consistency find a specific time of day that you commit to working on your mem memorization um, and you can also work on it throughout the day something that I have found helpful is to take a 3 by 5 card and write um, a portion of or even the whole passage that I'm memorizing and have it in my back pocket. Another really helpful tip, and this is more helpful for like larger passages, is to print the whole thing out in, in the entirety. Um, you can find it on Bible Gateway, any translation you want on there. There's other resources. Copy, paste it, put it into a Word doc, and print it out. Because that way you can underline it, color code it, draw arrows all over it, whatever you want that would help you memorize it without wearing out your Bible. And third, um, third step in memorizing would be, um, or third tip I would say in memorizing would be, find an accountability partner. It's not necessary, but it's so helpful to find somebody who would memorize with you or somebody who would encourage you and ask, how are you doing? Have you stuck with it? Are you almost done? Um, or somebody who would even listen to you quote it after you're done memorizing. So that's step three, memorize your passage. Step four, Meditate on your passage. Meditating is not some like OM practice where you empty your mind. It's actually filling your mind. It's thinking about your passage. It's taking time to mull over and ask questions of and apply your text to your life. Ask, what does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about human beings? And finally, what should I, what what does that mean I need to change in my life? And ask God to help you do that. Finally, step five, don't be discouraged. Your capacity to memorize, just like any other skill, grows with practice. So practice. Even so, I must say that I've found that I can work and work on a passage and it just won't stick and I'm tempted to give up. Or, once I've memorized a passage, I forget it so quickly and that can be very discouraging too. Our part is to be faithful. Do it and watch with joy at what God will do with it.